Hello, my name is Steve Nethery. I'm the pastor of Spring Hill Baptist Church. Thank you for worshiping with us. We appreciate it. Today, we have a guest speaker. He is a minister slash missionary in the Philippines. He and his family. He's an awesome man of God. He loves God. He loves his family. He, he loves the church of Christ, the God's family. And he ministers and makes disciples in a community that is very impoverished. He's also an author. He has written numerous books and in person, he'll be giving some of those books away. But if you're interested in receiving one of those books, you just email us at the office or you call the church office and we'll do our best to get you one of those books. Welcome to the Spring Hill Worship Service. Followers of Jesus have the Spirit living inside them. This Spirit offers us power to level up. We can become the people God wants us to be. We can power up our faith, add to it goodness, level up with knowledge, practice self-control, engage perseverance, lock in godliness, and boost it all with love. You can change the world with God's help. You can power up. Thank you for joining us today. We are so glad you are here. We worship your Lord with us.
Worshiping God includes showing his love to others through kindness, compassion, and sharing the good news of salvation. It also includes giving back some of our blessings that God has given us, our time, our talents, our skill sets, and our finances. Your faithful giving helps us minister to those who are hurting, those who are in need, and those who are lost to our work in the inner city areas of Manila. It is your tithes and offerings, your prayers, and your words of encouragement that continue to help us bring hope, share Christ, and impact the world. There are several easy ways to give in person. Come to one of our Sunday morning worship gatherings or stop by the church office during the week. Online, through the giving link on the Spring Hill website. Through the mail to our street address. Using bill pay, you can set up automatic payments through your bank. Through the giving link on the YouVersion app on your smartphone. Using the QR code. Or by simply texting the word GIVE to 434-423-5300 right from your phone. Thank, Thank you, you for partnering with us as we create opportunities to follow Jesus. Jesus. hankering for a cup of tea. I usually stick with these tea bags right here on this shelf because that's, that's about how high I can reach. But I've heard some really great things about that orange spice tea up there on the top shelf. And honey, I've heard that honey is really good in tea too. So I... Uh, uh, well, I guess I'll stick with my old what you tea doing, bags. Mom? No, I'm just going to make a cup of tea. Oh, you going for that orange tea up there? Yeah. Oh, it looks pretty high. Can I help you with that? Yeah, thank you. All right, let's see. <laughs> oh, here's your tea. That was easy. Oh, and here's your honey. Wow, thank you. You're welcome. Knuckle bump. you're awesome. I love working together as a team. <laughs> Enjoy your tea, Mom. Thanks. I'm really enjoying this cup of orange spice tea with a bit of honey. Mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah, that's some good stuff. You know, I learned a tough lesson today. I think I have the tendency to do things that I just think I can do by myself. I don't want to bother other people. I don't want to have to depend on other people. And that's not always a good thing. We might think we can do it all. We might think that we have the power to do everything on our own. In fact, you might be really good at something. You might be really good at a lot of things. But the truth is, you can't do everything. Neither can I. <laughs> In fact, I know there's a whole lot of things I can't do, like reach the honey on the top shelf. So whether it's willpower or physical strength or courage, Sometimes we just don't have the strength to do things. So what if we decide to only do the things that we know we can do all by ourselves? What do you think might happen then? What if I could only eat the stuff on the shelves that I could actually reach by myself? I mean, I'd probably be living on tea bags and salt. I'd probably get along okay, but... I have a feeling I'd be missing out on a lot of really good stuff, really fantastic stuff. Have you ever heard the term, there's strength in numbers? What do you think that means? I'll tell you what I think it means, that when we work together, we can accomplish so much more than why, when we try to do things on our own. When we cooperate, amazing things happen. Cooperation is when we work with others to do something that needs to be done. So here's an example for you. Do you think you could lift a car by yourself? Do you think you could lift a car in an emergency if 15 people are working together and cooperating? Ordinary people can do extraordinary things when they act together. There really is strength in numbers, especially when we ask God for his strength. And together, we can do so much more than we could by ourselves. 
That's because nothing is impossible with God. There's nothing that our God can't do. He can move mountains. He can hold back the seas. He can raise people from the dead. Why would we ever think anything is too hard or too scary when we have the power of God to help us? When we believe in God, we don't have to rely on our own strength or our own abilities, which is a good thing, because sometimes he asks us to do things that we don't think we can do on our own, like go on a mission trip or talk to somebody we don't know or be kind to others or help someone who's in need. That's because we might think we can only do the things that we already know how to do and that we're sure we can do on our own. And it might be scary to try something that we don't know whether or not we can do it. But when we work together, when we're showing love to the people around us, relying on each other for help and doing the things that God asks us to do, things get done faster, things get done better. And really, we find out we can do things we never even knew we could do. Teamwork makes the dream work, am I right? So here's your challenge. Ask God to give you his strength so that you can do the things that he wants you to do. And then look for ways to work together as a team, to cooperate with other people, to help those who are in need, those who are hurting, those who are lost, those who just might need a little bit of help. Because when we trust in God that he will give us his strength, we can do so much more than we ever thought possible on our own. See you, friends.
Good morning, Spring Hill family. It's wonderful to have the opportunity to share today's message with you this morning. Let's begin with the word of prayer. Jesus, we praise your name. We worship you for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. We praise you for your work in, in our lives, Lord. We praise you that you are our strength and power, Lord. We pray that you would open our hearts and minds for today's message. We pray that you would give us understanding of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's message, God help me live in your strength and power. This should be our daily prayer. And yet it's most often when we are in times of need that we pray that prayer to God. And I remember back when I first arrived in Manila to study at seminary. And this was back before the airport was air conditioned. When you got off the plane, which was comfortable to a little bit cool. And then all of a sudden the heat and humidity just blast you when you get off the plane. And approaching immigration, you know, you try to look presentable and decent and just sweat coming down, a whole stomach is just just wet and just, just feeling very uncomfortable. And I, I arrived at the airport, all I had was an address and a name of a professor that I would be staying with until I found a place. Then through God's, God's working, I was able to, the taxi driver was able to take me right there. I got enrolled in, in the seminary and got the syllabuses. I took five classes. And when I read the syllabus and all that was expected, it was my heart just sunk. It was every class, 10 to 15 page major paper, several smaller papers, a few pages long. Each class had 1,000 pages of reading required, which meant 5,000 pages. And I'm thinking to myself, 5,000 pages in four months? Is that physically possible? <laughs> but but God was able to, to get me through that, I'm fully relying, relying on him, not a, only able to, to finish first semester, able to, to fully graduate and, and continue on for, for studies after that. And just a time of, of fully relying on God. And today's message on God help me live in your strength and power is from Colossians 1, 9 to 14. A little bit of background on the city of Colossae. By the time, time of Paul, the city was, was really degrading. It was a time of, of economic hardships. It was, it was dwindling in importance. And there were still merchants that would come through. It was still semi-connected to the trade routes. And the merchants, they would not only sell their goods, they would also tell their beliefs. So the, this brand new Christian church that was started by, by um, the group of Christians from Ephesus that were there. So Paul actually never went to Colossae, but they were, they were taking what they were told about, about Jesus. And then they were hearing these, these merchants tell, tell their, their face and their, their beliefs, and they were mixing them together. So it, it became what's known today as the Colossian heresy, which we don't actually know the specifics of that, but it's what Paul's reacting to. So as church leaders, Paul was, was hearing this strange teachings coming out of the church in Colossians or Colossae. So he wanted to, to reply to that. And that's what the, the book is about. So if you just uh, some examples of from, from Colossians on you know, Paul teaching who Jesus is from verses 1, 114. In whom, speak, speaking of Jesus, we have redemption. The forgiveness of sins. Going down to, to verse 1, verse 20 is, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. And then verse 22, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and accusation. And then in 2.14, having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us, he took it away, nailing it to the cross. And then Paul also talks about how we are to live in light of who Jesus is. And this is two verses 20. Since you died with Christ to the basic principles of this world, why, 
as though you still belong to it, do you submit to its rules? And then dropping down to 3, verse 1. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And this leads us to our passage, Colossians 1, verses 9 to 14. For this reason, since the day we have heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light, for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his son, whom he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Paul and Timothy, this is their prayer for the, the church in, in Colossians, the prayer for them to live a life worthy of the Lord. And then the, the rest of the prayer is, it speaks of how they were to live, worthy of the Lord. And that's what we'll look at this morning from verse 10. They were to live a life worthy of the Lord by bearing fruit in every good work. Bearing fruit, it includes telling others about Jesus, telling them about, about his love and who he is and helping them grow in faith. During the pandemic, we opened up our house every morning for Bible study, prayer, and games to times for just neighbors, people in the, the community, people in our church. And every morning we had between two to maybe 10, 10 people come and stay between 15 minutes to up to lunchtime. And throughout that time, this was several months of, of people up coming over. Um, people came to, to faith and also reaching out to, to their neighbors. So we, we saw our, our church had to close down by the government, but we still saw saw it grow and we saw God work. We, we, we weren't allowed to gather in the church, but we were still allowed to, to meet in our homes. And bearing fruit for every good work, it's also living in integrity, walking walking the talk. It's in our, I'm doing a, a missions small group here at Spring Hill. And the first lesson we looked at what Old Testament missions was, which was come and see. The, the Israelites were to be a light to the nations where the nations would come to Jerusalem, come to the temple, and learn about God and, and worship God through seeing the, the, the lifestyle, the lives of, of the Israelites and how they lived. And Jesus expanded that to, to go and tell, go and tell the good news. And with still the importance of, of living righteously, where we can't separate how we live from, from our faith. And Paul made a, a very bold statement in 1 Corinthians 4.16, I urge you to imitate me. So this is the complete opposite of Jesus' criticism of the Pharisees. From Matthew 23, verses 2 and 3, and this is Jesus speaking. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit at Moses' seat. So you must obey them and do everything they tell you to do. But do not... But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. So Jesus was, was criticizing the Pharisees for, for essentially being hypocrites. And Paul, a former Pharisee who had received Jesus, is saying, look at me, look at my life as an example of someone who follows, who follows Jesus. And this is a huge challenge for us where, where we live it's, it's a, a challenge and also one of the big advantages. Where we live, it's very densely populated, a, an informal settlement in Manila. So I look out, I look at my house where we're staying here in Central Virginia. And in the wintertime, I can count about six houses, maybe seven. In our, our home in Manila, when I look out, I could literally see several hundred. You can't even count how many, many homes that we could look out and see from 
from our third floor as we look look down over over the houses. It's really everybody's right next to each other. And so people see our lives and they know we're connected with the church. And we've had people approach us. I've been watching you for one year and decide that you guys are good people. And we've had many comments of people coming to church because they see they see the lives of, of church members that, that have come to faith. There's a basketball court in here near our place. And I was hanging out there one one afternoon talking with one of the men. And he was telling me, you know, several years ago, I was in this computer shop and this guy walked in with a gun and I was ducking behind and I kind of got a, a look at who he was. And he's leading one of the Bible studies at your church. And I, so I approached the guy and he was like, yeah, pastor, I'm sorry. Before I, I came to Jesus, that's, that, that wasn't my life. And I, I knew he had a, a rough background, but he never he had never told that story before. And I've heard stories of one of our, our church members who's very active now, a, a strong leader. His teenage years were passed out drunk. And the, the parents know that. And they used to use him as a bad example. Don't, don't be like him and passed out on the, the basketball court where he could not fall asleep without alcohol. And I, I met with him regularly, prayed with him, studied scripture with him, got freedom from, from that addiction. And he's been several years sober now. And, and people now point to him, wow, I can't believe how different he is. His uncle is like, what are you guys doing in your church? How is, how is my nephew so, so different of a person than he was before, before he got connected to your church? And one of our, our college students, she came to faith when she was in high school. And her, her sharing was before she, she came to Jesus, she was the terror in school. She was the bully. She was the, she talked back to her teachers. Her parents were always getting called to come to the school to, to talk to the, the guidance counselor and just massive discipline issues. She come to faith. Now she's, she's actually helping to lead our, our youth group. And she took, during the pandemic, she stepped up. We're not allowed to, to gather in a church. She was gathering kids and going to their homes and, and doing Sunday school with them in the in their homes and able to, to still continue the children's ministry on her own with out of her own her own conviction and and, and passion to, to to teach the word of God. And it's growing in every good work. And continuing on in the passage. Bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. The second aspect of what it is to live a life worthy of the calling of God is growing in the knowledge of God. And for the Colossians, this was the knowledge of, of who God is in order to, to confront the, the false teachings that were coming in through this Colossian heresy, the, the false teachings that they were hearing. And growing in, growing in faith or growing in the knowledge of God is really being in the word of God. Studying the Word of God, where, and I, I know I've said this the last time I, I preached here also, but it's coming to church one hour, even small group, that's only two hours a week. That's not enough to really grow in our faith. We have to be in the Word of God, studying the Word of God on our own, and, and with just the, the desire of wanting to become lifelong learners. The, the actual word disciple, nowadays we use it as Christian or follower of Jesus, but how, how its original use is pupil or learner. So in Jesus' great commission, go and make disciples of all nations. It's go and make learners of Jesus in all nations. This idea of lifelong learner, where when we accept Jesus in our hearts, we only have so much understanding of, of who, who he is. He died for our sins and was, was raised again on the cross. So we have this basic knowledge of, of who he is. And, but it's, it's really through this lifelong of, of studying scripture that, that we can really grow, grow in our walk, walk with God. And I'm so encouraged when I run into, or when I see seniors, I teach in a seminary in Manila. That's one of my roles there. And when seniors or older people enroll it, it's so encouraging i remember back one of my students he graduated now he retired and him and his wife in their retirement they would they would open their their home and just kind of sit out front and there were a lot of street kids that were hanging out so then they started a children's ministry with them inviting them into their home have brought food let the kids take a bath that was a 
a big need for the kid. And just doing like Bible lessons with him. And then he realized that his, his understanding was very limited. So he, he enrolled in Bible school as a almost 70 year old senior wanting to grow in the knowledge of God, wanting to be better equipped to, to do this ministry that, that God just laid, it, laid on his heart, heart to do. And that's, that's very encouraging when, when I see that. And growing in, in the knowledge of God, it's not simply the head knowledge of, of reading, reading scripture and, and just knowledge in our head. It's, it's our actions. It's, we are transformed by scripture. It transforms us. And through, through being transformed by scripture, it's, we live out the word of God. When the pandemic first hit in, in Manila, the, the lockdowns were drastically stricter than they were here in the U.S. Everything shut down. Close to 90% of the people in my community were instantly out of work. And if you, had, if you tested positive, they would put yellow caution police tape on your door so no one's allowed in and out. Streets, they would block off the street so only residents were allowed in and out. And so our, our church responded by, we were doing weekly food distribution and they shut down all public transportation. So it meant walking to the grocery store, which was a mile or so away. So me and two guys from church, we would take essentially this carry on suitcases and walk to the grocery store. And as we were going there on one of our trips, they were noticing some of the homeless families. And then, so we got to talking and I was like, wow, they must be having a super rough time. If we have it bad, they have it really rough because there's no one out. And since no one's out, they're not getting any money from, from begging. So we went, we, we grocery shop, went back home. And then they actually took their portion of the, the food distribution and went back and, and gave their, their, their part to the, the six families that, that we passed on the way. And as they were talking with them, they were like, they found out, yeah, the government was, was not providing for them at all. And they were very thankful to get, to get extra meals. And this is just one example of love your neighbor as yourself, that the, the scripture touched these, these two guys' hearts enough that they gave from their, their own food relief. And then lastly, verse 11, and this is the, the title of our message today, um, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father. The third aspect of living a life worthy of the Lord is being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. And this is how the Christian life is achieved. Living according to God's strength, it's beyond our, our normal capacities. When Paul found strength in the Lord, he's in first or second Corinthians, he mentions this, the thorn in the flesh. And it's not specific on what that actually is. Some Bible scholars think it's um, uh, eye issues because he speaks of writing very large letters in, in big print because he has eye problems. It could have been... Um, uh, an ailment connected to, he was speaks of being beaten many times, so just wounds that did not heal right. So whatever it was, he, he was in this chronic physical pain and he prays to God to, to relieve him of it. And then he says in, this is 2 Corinthians 12, verse eight and nine, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. God help me live in your strength and power in my physical limitations. Paul was able to, to be comforted and find strength in God through his physical, physical suffering. And my time in, in Manila has exposed us to, to several physical hardships. I have a about the size of the end of the finger. If you did a chest X-ray, it's a it looks like bone, and it's scar tissue from TB when I had tuberculosis a long time ago. So relax, <laughs> it's it's no longer no longer contagious. And I've had shoulder injury and knee injuries because we tried to do a lot of sports with the youth in our neighborhood. And obviously, I'm 
not quite a teenager anymore. So I've had several sports injuries from, from being with, with them. And Emma has a, a lung issue where she actually wore a mask before masks became, became a thing um, because she has this um, chronic lung, lung issue that's actually non, non-curable. So we've had multiple physical, physical issues just from, from our exposure to um, really life in, in the city. And then in, in Philippians, Paul speaks of being strengthened of the Lord through contentment, contentment in ministry, um, contentment in times of abundance and in times of, of need. So he says in, in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And I have experienced this in Manila. When I, when I first arrived, the, the, the pastor I, I worked with, he, he left pretty recently after, after I was there. So it was basically just me in this very small house. And then the, the culture there is, if you're living alone, then you know, it's, it just doesn't happen. No one, no one really lives alone. So a lot of teenagers decide to move in with me so I wouldn't be lonely. And of course I was used to my own room or, or at least, and, and this was, I, I didn't really know, know how to live. So we, we all slept on the floor and this was a tiny house in an informal settlement. So you could picture like the upper Christmas child if you've seen any of those videos, like it, it's those communities that they, they pass out to. But I was, we would put the, lie down on the floor, have a sheet, we'd put it over our head because the rats would go across the raptors and drop drop things at night and we'd wake up and find chicken bones and toothbrushes and just random random things. But we would we would do Bible study together, pray together, and and it was about ten months of what I described as really just intense suffering. It's it was a, a very difficult time being being in that living environment with, with all those guys. And I really didn't think that there was any, any fruit in that. And then fast forward to today, one of those former teenagers who I've, I've spent time with, he's now pastoring a church outside of the city. Um, another guy, so I was walking, this was right before the pandemic, walking to the grocery store, and I, this police officer yells my name, Aaron! And it starts running toward me, and I, I just kind of froze. It's like, uh, and a little background on that. In Manila, the, the president has, in his campaign speech to become president, promised to fill Manila Bay with the bodies of drug dealers. So basically giving police free reign to, to, to shoot, to, to execute. And there would be each night up to a dozen or so or more bodies with like, cardboard signs, I am a drug dealer. And so I just kind of froze as this police officer was running toward me. And then as he got closer, I, I recognized him. And he was one of the, the teams from that study. And he ran up and gave me, gave me a hug. And we chatted a little bit. And he's telling me about his family. His, his wife, children are all walking with Jesus. And they're, they're all very active in the church. And that was just so exciting to see how, how God had, had used that time of me and my complete weakness to, to really work, work his will in, in the lives of these, these youth. And when I've told that story before, I had someone approach me, wow, I could never do that. And, and then I replied, well, it's, it was not me. It's, it's the strength of, of God. It's God working through me. And, and the good news of that is all of us can do that. It's, it's nothing special about me. God's working his power and strength through each of us. Or we, we can do that. And so God might not be calling you to, to live in a, an urban slum like, like my family, but, but maybe he is. Maybe that's something to, to pray about. Uh, maybe he's calling you to, to get more involved in your community or here at Spring Hill. Maybe he's calling you, you to missions. So continue to, to pray and, and don't limit to what we can do because it's, it's working in God's strength that, that we see, see God's power working through us. 
And being contentment, it's, it's being able to praise God in all circumstances. And about four years ago, actually almost exactly four years ago, March in 2018, a fire ripped through, through our community. And one of the, the men in our church, his home, he was playing basketball time. By the time he got back, he lives with his elderly mom. By the time he got his mom out, the, the fire had, had spread through his house. So everything completely destroyed. And the day after the fire, I helped him. We swept everything out to the corner. And he was telling me the story. He was lying down. And the only thing left was just the walls. The roof was completely gone. And all his possessions were just this big pile of black soot. And because it's pitch black, because of the, no, no electricity, he was looking up through the empty roof of his house and saw stars. And normally you can't see maybe one star in, in Manila. But he, he was like, he saw stars. And so he's lying there. He just lost all his possessions and praising God for being able to see, see stars from his house. And it's just being in contentment, being able to praise God, regardless of what happens, regardless of 100% of earthly possessions have been destroyed, praising God for the beauty of, of his creation. And God, help me live in the power of your strength regardless of the situations that we have to face. And then so that, this is verse 11 to 12, so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. Paul prays that the Colossians would pray and give thanks to God. And this is a life worthy of the Lord. That as God gives us strength, we pray that we could pray this prayer along with, along with Paul. And I want to close with an invitation that if, if you haven't yet received Jesus into your heart and, and you know, just are not sure, uh, to contact the, the church, contact the church office, and we would love to connect with you and pray with you and, and share more about what it is to live in the power and strength of God. And I'll close by reading from Psalm 46. God is our strength, refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord the desolation he has brought to the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress.
Thank you, Spring Hill, for your continued prayers, your continued support for our ministry in Manila. We're a faith-based organization, which means we all of the funding for our ministry is, is from churches, friends, family, that supports everything we, we do. Um, the, the gentleman that I told the story about, that was looking at Praising the Stars, the, the money from Spring Hill was able to fully rebuild his house. And so we just praise God for your continued support for our ministries. Let me close in prayer. Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for just the, the prayer of Paul for the, the church in Colossians, Lord. We pray that as we face our challenges, or as we face our, our physical limitations, as we face just different hardships in life, and, and also good times, Lord, in times of abundance, times of hardships, we pray that you would be our strength and power. In Jesus' name, amen.